Wow. Four people on immediately. Bam, bam. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Who do we have here? TG3 Fishing. Tom it, Westoff. That door of, uh, just keeps on revolving here on the Dream Machine 1.0 project. A lot of turnover on this. <laughs> and of course, the one, the only, the Bass Wizard, Kelly Puppel the Gray. What's up, man? Another night, another day. <laughs> what time did we start today, another guys? Another day turned into night. We started it late, though. Uh, I think it was 1.30 when we came over. So I was started. I started a little before you. I was working on the. Well, you'll see in a minute. But a little surprise. Yeah. yeah, we're a little bit behind schedule. Ten o'clock or so. But that's kind of been a recurring thing with this project, huh, Kelly? Tom, you got to see that firsthand today? Yes, sir, I did. Initially, we were just coming over to do one quick test and put it on the back of the Tacoma and drive out of here. Not so much. Not so much. <laughs> so let's give these uh, wonderful people tuning in here a little update on progress so far. Kelly, you want to start from the bow and work our way back to the stern? Okay. Sneak peek. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, we, um, we got things all pretty much tight right now. Um, hit, hit the, is the house on right now? Yeah, it should yep. be. Okay. Great. Okay, so we're powered. We got the house going on right now. We got 12 volts running through the boat. So we're hot. And we have Hydro Wave. Hydro Wave is functional. Trolling motor. Echo Map. 93 on the bow is functional. It is all networked together. If you take a look in here real quick, move that old gas tank. So we got lights on to be able to display that Panoptics live scope off the front and the back display, which is really cool feature so whoever is fishing with me in the dream machine 1.0 will be able to see the same thing we are looking at here on the front so all that is dialed in and i noticed something in these compartments here kelly tell us about that what do we got well we uh utilized all the areas for uh flotation as well with the um Flotation, um, what it, noodles, I guess you call them, the pool, the pool noodles. But these are actually commercial grade pool noodles, the Ollie Order and Black, which really accent yeah. and go with this. You're trying to get me to get blue ones. Well, whatever. I mean, pool noodles were pool noodles, but he went, Ollie wanted black, and now actually the black are the commercial grade. It's a standard, and they're solid and even more dense. Better flotation, and we can float. 1400 pounds right now as a as a ballpark figure with what we have in the boat 1400 pounds i can float right now so this boat is not going to sink so we're, we're we're good on that uh definitely with the money that's been invested in the time it, you're not going to lose this boat unless it's hijacked so but this little compartment's been a lifesaver too everything's networked through hubbed through and wired accessible uh, which is very clean and uh, yeah, I love it. This little this little deal here came out really well. I'm happy with it. Well done, brother. And then what is this stuff I'm standing on here in the main storage compartment? That's, that's pretty uh, slick. That's two two uh, front door uh, floor mats actually that I actually cut to fit. Very nice. And actually, I have the seam in the middle that's split that I could still go in and clean and uh, dry it out and remove that floor if I want to and uh, just to keep it clean and dry if there's any issues and as well you'll see the additional flot flotation all additional flotation that's double double too deep yeah there's too deep on the flotation on that that wire right there is going to get distributed better with a longer cable when we get the cable ordered. the ghost stole one of our 20 foot cables not too happy about that so I got to order another cable yeah but anyway so, what happens when it gets dark in there so the compartment yeah when it gets dark in there yeah you guys are gonna
Come on, Kelly, you're killing me. <laughs> hey, look at that. LED light number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Looking pretty good. You want to hit that, uh, maybe the garage light so we can actually really see what this looks like? Yeah, that would be cool. Let's, let's kill it. Let's kill the lights in here. So tell us a little bit about the wiring job and the LED lights and what that took out of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Hey, yo. Now we're popping, guys. That looks sweet. How's that looking? LED kit from TH Marine. I think it's like the $99 kit. So like I said, I think it's a nine piece kit. You got three sections of the LED strip lighting, right? Or three pairs. And then you got three of the uh, little LED four inch uh, strip lights there. One on each side and one in the main storage compartment. So when we're fishing at night or early morning hours and we need to get access here. See, there's no light coming off my phone. That's just the straight uh, LED lighting right there. So very cool, Kelly. Yeah, this cockpit lit up really well. I like the way that this came in to play. So this is literally our first test of the LED in the dark, right? No, this is this is what we're we're experiencing right here now. Yeah, and it's perfect. It's just right. What else we got for LEDs on this boat? So on LEDs, on top of it too, we have our running lights as well. And, well, uh, you know what? I'm going to take it back a notch there. Let's go back to the... the, the, the Dang, back Gina! And, and we are popping on the back end here on the transom. And there's what we got on our transom, boys. We got dual starboard and port. Those are also... LEDs that are blasting the back end. Those are also LED lights from TH Marine. <clears throat> So, nice job there. And then with this switch panel, I'm going to hit that lights back on for us, Tom. So we finally got the switch panel all put together. Huh? Look at all that. It's all backlit. Faces put on. What else we got hooked up to this uh, switch Actually, panel? Actually, you know what? Kill that one more time. I'm going to take it to the bow and show them a little bit on, a little bit on the bow here. You guys haven't seen this on a, on a little on a boat. Oh, good. Watch your head, boys. Hey! Check that out. All right. Here we go, guys. Take a look at that. Those are our LED running lights. $10 on Amazon. Yep, those were easy to mount. Flush mount. Two little screws on each side. That's a done deal there. Yeah, that's cool. And all right, very cool. What else? What else we got hooked up to the switch panel? We're pretty much all wired up, 100%. Good to go, huh? Yeah, we're solid. We're solid on all the electronic side, electronics, detail, electricals, all that. And then I'll just start out right now. Is we got our bilge pump. We got the actual live well in the mm -hmm. pump in. And that's our pump aerator pump out, basically, for our pumping out. Nice. And then we got the cabin lights. Oh, whoa. And we got the spreader lights, what I call spreader lights on the back transom. And then the navigation lights. Nice. Okay. And then I'm going to show you guys. You guys still with us? Dude, look at this. Wow. Hey. Did you see the steps? All right. I think we're good now. Sorry about that, guys. We uh, had some connectivity issues. We couldn't even see any of the comments previously. All right, focus, guys. What are you guys looking at? Clear legs, flooding. Yeah. Don't look good. That's old news. So anyways, where were we? We were talking about the finished wiring projects. Here is the buses. Here are the buses. 
of which were giving us some issues earlier. You can say that. <laughs> a little bit. Something simple? Uh, I mean, actually, yeah. <laughs> Usually is. I mean, there's a lot going on here, guys. There's this is by far the most intricate wiring job I've ever seen on a 13-foot aluminum boat. Uh, much props to this man and to everybody that's helped along the way. Casey, Matt, Tom, that guy. Lost some sleep over that. <laughs> that entire uh, Doc Brown setup that we went over a few episodes ago. But it's all paid off. Everything's all labeled. And functional, most importantly, Perkle switches rigged up. All the breakers are in place. Everything is rigged up safely. We did have one small issue earlier, did we not, guys? At least one. <laughs> maybe two. Maybe maybe two. Just and a I'm not issues. trying to place Just... the camera in an awkward position, but I'm really trying to show what I'm talking about here. Oh, micro anchor. We had a little, we had a little fire. <laughs> it wasn't quite a fire. It was just smoke, well, really. All of said we got smoke and we got. A it would have been a fire, fire back here. Dude, it was <laughs> a lot of smoke in a really short amount of time. Like, yeah, uh, for some reason, just with the twelve volt current that was running to the micro anchor, it wasn't, it wasn't activated. This power that was going to it, it just decided to just start smoking. It's been hooked up for a week or more and we went we went through and cycled through and it's had no issues no issues but it just sat here today uh once i turned the house uh power on and and but the unit wasn't physically manually turned on it decided to go up and smoke up so, and smoke tour up and smoke on the micro anchor for some reason <clears throat> and tom what are we looking at right here <clears throat> where did we go pick up yesterday we went and picked up this brand spanking new four stroke merc pumped on this one boys and girls so we had original plans to use that honda motor well it started fine the first two or three times i went to pull start it and then i couldn't get it started anymore and at that point i was like you know what kind of over it it doesn't do any justice to this boat with as much work and as much uh awesome stuff as there is in this little 13 foot six inches of epicness so I felt like it was time to upgrade the motor. So we ordered this 20 horsepower four stroke motor. And the nice thing is we gained five horses and the weight of the motor is actually the exact same as the previous. So we've lost nothing except about three grand plus. So yes, Leroy Smith, this is TG3. Yes, sir. It's a pretty cool name, Leroy. Dead serious too. So, yep, that thing's ready to go. We should do a little test fire, huh, guys? We got it all wired up. We've uh, made some adjustments to the gas tank situation. You want to talk about that at all, Kelly? Yeah, we uh, got a factory Quicksilver gas tank that wasn't compatible to this installation. And why is that? too tall and too too wide so yeah we and couldn't get that it won't to fit in there elevation and width yeah it's just it's not functional plus on top of it too this the way this was designed and laid out was for this gas tank and i worked around with that too so so yeah we, uh, modified and cannibalized parts off of this to put on here and make it work and make it all streamlining factory awesome well you want to do the honors brother you want to hit that beautiful electric start and see if we can get this thing fired up and here's the kill switch on the end of the throttle there. look at that how easy was that <laughs> cool i'm pretty stoked on that we're going to see how that new power plant pushes this platform and one of the last finishing touches, actually, are these little bad boys. What do you think about these, Kelly? Let's show everybody at home what we're dealing with here. Yeah, I'm impressed. I think it's pretty cool. I don't think you've never seen these before. No, this is new. This is new for me too, and I like it because 
It can be mounted several different ways on the application on this. Well, first of all, what is it? It's a lure hanger. And the thing about this particular lure laying hanger, it's non-metal, metallic, it's plastic, and it's lure safe. So you have a nice, beautiful mega bass hard bait like you do next to you, huh? And you want to keep it that way? Wedge it straight down, belly down. So the hooks in here. Mm -hmm. Also, no, you don't really need to put the hooks in there. The hooks don't have to the go. The body in there. wedges in those plastic grooves. There you go. Boy, it's going to be a nice fit. Oh, those are nice. Just so, like oh, that. Those will hold. Yeah. This is my first time using it. Just what I saw the concept on this. All right, guys. You can you shove them all the way in and and look at this. And there will be no chafing on the finish on this because of the type of rubber that's on here. It's very very it's pliable. Actually silicone. Yeah, it's very soft and pliable, and it conforms to the bait. You can see that. Look, it just conforms. It doesn't matter the diameter from the large from the head to the tail, and it conforms to it. And then you get adhesive. 3M adhesive and you just mount it just like that i mean so based on what i see right now you would do a head nose front this way and alternate them stagger them so you'd go one head this way and then stagger the head this way back and forth well, you should that, show us i would that's how i would do that i mean just based on what i'm experiencing here right yeah. now that's how i would install a bait like this now, bigger bait, now here's what I just come to conclusion here, I believe. On a bigger bait, that's going to be interesting. Very. I don't think you can go right to the next slot. You probably, oh, let's see what we can do here. Oh, wow. I'm impressed. Jeez. You can do it. Wow. Yes, you can. I didn't think so, but look that's at that, sick. guys. Look at that. And they're not rubbing. They're not chafing. And they're solid. I didn't think that was going to fly, guys. Impressed. <laughs> Impressed. Honestly, I didn't think that was... Yep. And what are these called? Look at this. Wow. Look at this. Pull on that. Hard bait launch pad. No, hold, the, hold, the, hold the base. By groove fishing. Look at that. Dang. Those baits aren't coming off. In, the, in a bumpy boat ride... Yeah, in a bumpy boat ride, guys, you're not going to lose your baits. You're not going to come to your spot and have these laying on the bottom of your deck or anywhere inside the compartments, wherever you mount these. I mean, I mean, I'm mean, i not saying here, but I'm just saying guys do it. you have options, you know? You know um, where I'm going to want to mount one? On the face. There you go. Oh, that's a good idea. And you got room on there, too. Yeah, but we're going to wait till I we like actually that. get our finished uh, material on there before we do that. Leroy, it is made by Groove Fishing, and it is the hard bait launch pad. What else do we got from them? And we got the small one for like jigs, hooks, which is very compact, and you can hold. Looks like you can hold a dozen on this this little strip here, and that's just very Good. simple. Just push in. Oh wow! Look at that. That's solid, guy. Oh, that's solid. So you can interlock these too. So you can put your Okashira screw heads, your war bait heads, your weightless hooks, beast hooks, whatever. See? And of course your jigs. My jigs and my chatter bait. Look at that. Same thing, 3M, 3M adhesive. Should just stick to the uh, treated finish of this wood quite nicely we're ready to rock and that's going to really tie it all in we're at about i'd say 90 to 95 percent completion on the 1.0 project would you say minus Kelly? The, minus c deck c deck and uh, gas shocks for the lids and then you know we got i got to do the um weather stripping okay know, other than that real minor things we're we're, we're, we're real close guys Real, real close. We're waiting on the C deck. But other than that, this thing is, it's rolling. It's it's going to be getting wet, and it's going to be uh, we're going to be kept getting some fish in this boat soon. 
I believe that's the deal. Rad. Yep. Well, let's let's uh let's install one just to show these guys how quick and easy it is, and we'll let them uh, go on and enjoy the rest of their weekend. Mike, we are probably going to be launching it somewhere here in not so sunny California in the next day or two. Location to be determined. One little tip I like to have for you guys installing anything with this 3M adhesive, including GoPro mounts, um, things like the LED strip lighting here from TH Marine, which also came with 3M adhesive. I've noticed just from applying uh, this stuff in hot weather versus cold weather, it really helps to heat the back of the 3M adhesive before you actually apply. Do you want to do a two? Do you want to do a double? Yeah, we do a double stack for now. Double stack for now. Okay. And with room for a possible third stack, Kelly. So, I'd I'd have it high enough so you can actually get three. There you go. That's not a problem. One, two, three. Boom. That's not a problem. That would be sick. Okay. So, and then also too. You got plenty of room to offset both sides there. Okay, so there so we I'm go. glad you're on this project. You're always looking so, like 10 steps ahead. You got to be smarter than the project or the tool. And this is a little hot tip Ollie was talking about. You need to get the glue activated on the 3M. That's all you need to do, guys, is just heat that, heat that up. Heat it up. Get it nice and gooey and sticky. And this is the key. And that's the key right there, guys. I got a good eye. I have a, I won't say a dead eye, but I got a good eye. And that's all you need to do. And it's installed. <clears throat> Sick. Let go. How's hey. that? And that's the deal with the gun, you know? The heat gun is the deal. Um, you want to do another one? Um, sure. But I was being distracted by the live scope trying to work up there, man. So I was trying to find a fish. <laughs> How cool is that? Anyways, we're going to let Kelly get back to work here. Signing off from weather-beaten Southern California. <laughs> Every time we have a guest in town, it seems like uh, they've been bringing some of their upper Midwest weather with them. Hey, now. <laughs> yeah, every time somebody comes in town, we seem to uh, get another storm. I call this rain a storm. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you, when did you get in, Tom? When did I, I got in uh, yesterday morning. What time? Or what was the weather conditions when you left Michigan? Uh, it was light and variable winds and five degrees Fahrenheit. Nice. Perfect for leaving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, hopefully we can uh, find a little break in this weather in the next few days while Tom is in town, so we can catch some fish instead of feelings. No, Martin, I did not bring any gear from overseas, unfortunately. <clears throat> You guys uh, enjoy your evening. Once again, thank you guys for tuning in to this build. Looks like we're uh, going to see some light at the end of the tunnel here. Getting real close. And there should be a... F oh! We didn't even show them your uh, awesome plumbing job, man. Oh. Because I was about to say, hopefully we'll have uh, a nice fish swimming in the newly plumbed live well sooner than later. Talk about this live well just briefly for us. We have a 800 pump going in. 800 gallon per hour pump. Yeah, GPA. And what I had to do is bring in a valve pump. Actually, come in here. It's a sprayer valve, and it's actually adjustable. Stick your live wells on your full your bass boat. It's right there. I can adjust the stream. The velocity and how much I want to put in and then down below we have our pump out for the pump out on this and the problem here is, is 
we couldn't maintain a level uh, of circulation because this live well is below the water line. The water line. So we'll maintain the water inside and then we'll circulate it and flush it out and bring in new water accordingly. And this is a transport live well for certification, more certification purposes to from the catch site to the way site and then take back out to release. It's not made for holding for fish all day long. It's for trophy fish. And that's the design on that. It's locked in, sealed, foamed, spray foamed inside. It's solid. Eight, eight gallon tank. Uh, you can put a good double digit in there and it'll keep them, keep them going until uh, we need to take care of them uh, accordingly and get them back uh, uh, weighed and released accordingly and safely and uh, documented awesome that's what this is all about yeah all right guys yeah. so once again going back to our exit thank you for tuning in please leave a comment hit the like button subscribe to the channel catch fish not feelings yeah c-dex on its way a couple of weeks and reeling in a million we'll be back in az